Mary, tonight's reading is going to be in Matthew 22. It's a parable that Jesus gave us about how the Jewish people, they rejected the offer and then how others got adopted into the family. Let's go ahead and read verse 4 and 5 and then 8 to 10 after. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened calf have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Yeah, so a parable Jesus told to describe who would be in heaven. Justin, you had someone that felt inadequate in becoming a Christian recently, and that's what we're kind of addre addressing here. So what was that? Yeah, I see the person reached out to me and they uh, stated that they felt inadequate, like you were saying, because they weren't born in the church and they've been being brought to church by a family. And this family has been going there their whole life and he's friends with the son. And he just felt that awkward, right? Because that he wasn't deserving of this because like we were saying, he was uh he, he wasn't born into this the church system. Yeah, you know, it, it just always hits a chord with me because Satan always works and messes with people. It, you know, that he is, uh, he, so this guy's a good guy doing the right thing, walking with Jesus, feeling inadequate because he's so new to the faith. He's humble as he should be coming to Jesus. But Satan says Christianity is really complex. You'll never really get it. Or something like that he says the people in the church like he wish you weren't even here. And a whole lot of lies is what he what he tells. Could you read John 8, 44? says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yeah, Satan. That's the other side. Jesus is the father of truth. Jesus told Pilate, he said, the reason I came into the world was to speak to the truth. And all those that love that, that love truth, listen to me. And, 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 he, and Satan is always doing the opposite. He's always stirring the pot with rumors and lies and plays on people's minds. So, uh, so what are his other lies? Uh, so one day you are distracted by some, some temptation Satan sends your way. Satan assures you that is no big deal. Everyone's doing it. And of course, no one will know. So then we relent and take the bait. And Satan says, gotcha. Now he tells us that we're the biggest losers ever seen. There's no no, no so-called Christian would ever do that. And God, never, God will never speak to them again. All lies, his native language. And I believe that that shows up all through the whole church system. Some people are struggling and Satan keeps telling them they're inadequate and this and that and other things. But then there's people that are satisfied and, and what they're listening to is just, Hey, you know, like Satan tells him, Hey, you're doing good. You, you know, you're doing wonderful. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is they're not doing good. All the ones that are not doing so good, he says, Hey, you're doing fine. And then he coaxes you to be on another committee or pay a little more money or do a little bit of this or that, or, or, or whatever. And just coaxes you to feel that everything is in order. And, uh, and you'll hear whenever the minister says kind things, he says, Hey, that's me. And all this kind of thing. Mm. And, and and that is that is so not okay. And then we can be say we're born into the faith, a law, large family. All everybody is everybody's been a Christian from way back, and mm. it's all to our benefit. But you know, it's all lies. For those that are doing okay, he cooks. You know, in a sense, he he gets you in one ditch, and other people in the other ditch. Yeah. So some some people are satisfied that that uh, that they're in a good place and self-righteousness comes along you know that when when we come to faith it's really hard and getting righteousness is really difficult but this, it's a real big 
step to get into righteousness and a very small step to get into self-righteousness. And so many people spend the rest of their life in that ditch. And that's not okay. Jesus couldn't help those people at all, but Satan loves that. And he doesn't mind us going to church as long as we do it from a self-righteous standpoint. Right. So either one way he's working, he's knocking us back. And on the other side, he's puffing, he's puffing us, up. us up. And you know, it's the yeah. interesting part about it here is, you know, it's like, what's the solution to this? Because you're saying it's one small step back into that uh, self-righteous ditch. It's like, it's obvious when you're in the sinner ditch that you're not doing well, right? And you want to get on the narrow way. But then the, the other ditch where you think you're probably doing some things right, but you're not surrendered. What is the solution? What do you think, Harry? Always test yourself all the time, all the time. Just because you're hearing kind things from the pulpit that says that we're all doing good and God loves everybody and all this kind of thing. Please, please be wise to it. Are we really like like in uh Second Corinthians 5 13, 5? Yeah, it says test yourselves. Don't you know that Christ Jesus lives in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. Yeah, we got to make sure we're testing ourselves because Satan is not going to do that for us. He'll either condemn us or puff us up. And, and either way, we're not in a good place. That's his job. And we have to make sure that we don't spend our life there. We have to do what we have to do. When test comes our way, we have to pass the test and pass the grade and graduate and get a job real job, walking with God, sharing the faith, doing what is necessary. Uh, and that is where we got to be. And, and, and But Satan is always going to catch us, either make us over-satisfied or over-guilty or over-something. But he, his job is to mess with the church. The people are going to the bars. He's already got those folks. He doesn't work much on them. They're already coasting. Mm -hmm. but, but church, that's where he wants to get people. And we have to be so careful that we're not the next victim. Amen. Thanks a lot for this, Harry. Thank you.